Hello all you beautiful people out there, I hope you have had or are having a fantastic day if you're new around here, welcome. My name is Sam, the teenager who talks about teenage stuff because there simply isn't enough of it on the internet. Gosh, it is good to be back after the two weeks that I've just had. Pretty hectic, pretty crazy, but I think the worst of it's behind me. For those of you wondering where I was, I was very busy with school and uni work. If you didn't see the story I put up a couple weeks ago, I had exams that I had to focus on, I had uni applications that I needed to send out but I think that's all over. So now I can balance it out and focus on YouTube a little bit as well. While I was gone, the channel kind of hit 600 subscribers, which is absolutely ridiculous. Thank you guys so much. It's nice to see that you're coming back, watching the content, subscribing, even when I'm not here. So fantastic stuff to see you guys. Your support is always incredible. I'm always in awe when I see it. If you're new to high school, just getting into high school or have been in high school for a while, you probably really realize that it can be a little bit of a place sometimes. And today I'm going to tell you my perspective on some of the do's some of the don'ts of high school life. As someone who's pretty close to graduating high school, doing pretty decently in terms of grades and seeing a lot of crap unfold in front of my eyes, I think some of the advice I'm gonna give you today is well worth listening to. So let's get right into it. We're gonna kick it off with the do's part of this video. And the first thing on my list is do be a genuine human, even when you don't feel like it. Don't be a piece of crap to your teachers. Don't be an ass. They're just going in there to do their job. And I'm not sure they wanna deal with some 11 year old kid giving them a hard time day in and day out making them feel like crap about themselves every single day a lot of the times we forget that teachers are humans too it's kind of like that awkward experience when you see your english teacher in the supermarket going like hey bro aren't you supposed to be in school right now well yeah they kind of need food to eat as well so don't give your teachers a hard time this do doesn't only apply to teachers as well it's your fellow students as well be a nice person a smile and a hello a good morning every single day can change someone's life Trust me on that one. So it's not just your teachers that you need to be nice to, it's also your peers and the people around you, people working at your school. Number two is do take up extracurricular activities. Extracurricular activities are great. If you have an after school activity, they're pretty short term. So even if you don't like it, you don't have to commit to it in the long run. And where extracurriculars help you out a lot is when it comes to uni applications. If you're planning on applying to a US institution, then they gobble up extracurriculars like a kid with Christmas candy on Christmas morning. It's mad. Also, they hold a lot more added potential than you might think. So, you know all those skills that you see people have on the internet? Well, you can potentially learn some from extracurriculars, either be that mental, physical, anything along those lines. After school activities are a great way to explore new interests, meet people you wouldn't usually network with, just overall have a fun time and de-stress after school. Very closely linked to number two is number three, which is do find a hobby that you do for an extended period of time. By that, I mean years on years. This hobby needs to be something other than studying, if studying is a hobby for you, because you need to find a way to de-stress yourself and get your mind off of work, because again, early burnout is never a good thing. And if you just keep working, keep hammering at it, you will not last. Trust me, you will not last. However long you think you will last, you won't. Also, hobbies that you start developing early on have the potential to change into full-scale projects later on, so they could potentially start making you money, they could potentially start into a business that you own, which is pretty cool. So yeah, hobbies are a very powerful thing. Do number four is do study the subjects you enjoy. Of course, if you are given the choice, like an IV student, NYP students, A-level students, GCSE student, whatever your curriculum may be, if you have the choice to pick certain subjects, pick the subjects you actually enjoy or potentially need, not the ones your friends are going to because Susie over there does not like the same subjects that I do. Hence, I did not pick the same subjects as Susie, even though Susie is looking mighty fine. In all seriousness, high school will become a nightmare if you pick subjects that you do not enjoy, if you're going in day in, day out, hating everything that you do. No, high school isn't necessarily the place everyone wants to go, but you can make your experience that more enjoyable by picking subjects that you actually engage with. Also, when it comes to picking subjects, I have tons of videos on how to do so relating to the IB program. If you're looking for a video, press that link at the top right hand corner. The fifth do is do balance your time between social activities and academia related activities. You need to find the right balance between your social life and your academic life. Don't let one overtake the other and don't let the other overtake the other either because too much of anything is not necessarily good. How you balance this is up to you, but allocate time to each thing, but don't let one overpower the other. The sixth do on today's list is do take up leadership opportunities. For those of you who don't know, which I'm assuming is the majority of you, unless you're a close friend, I'm head boy at my school, which is pretty sick, but 
that comes with a lot of responsibility. And in the past few months that I've been serving as head boy, those responsibilities have taught me invaluable skills that I will carry on with me for the rest of my life. Leadership positions are a great way to A, interact with your entire school community, B, learn what it's like to actually lead a team, and C, freaking master your organization and time management skills because those two skills are essential when it comes to leading anything that is of a significant size. Even if your leadership position doesn't entail you overseeing a thousand plus different people, that's completely okay because leadership comes in all different forms. Even if it's a small leadership task, just as being a peer mentor or leading a group to finish some sort of project, that will yield its own set of invaluable skills to you as well. Another plus of holding a leadership position is that they look really good on university applications, be that UK applications, US applications, missions officers love to see that you can take responsibility over your own life and manage a group of people. And last but definitely not least, the final do on my list today is do start organizing yourself early on. How you do this, again, is up to you, but my recommendations are download a to-do list like the Microsoft to-do list app. Looking for a video? Check it out, top link in the corner right there, or get yourself some sort of calendar app. The older you get and the more year groups you progress through, you're gonna realize that you have a lot more stuff to do and it increases exponentially year after year. So you need to find some sort of organizational method that works well for you. For me, the to-do list app works great. I pair it with a calendar as well, so I get the best of both worlds but it's up to you, whatever works best for you. Now we're moving on to the don'ts of high school. And I've seen these don'ts drag people down into a lot of deep crap. So highly recommend that you guys follow this advice and don't do these things. Don't number one is don't mix with the wrong crowd. Mixing in with the wrong crowd can be detrimental to your personal development because you're constantly going to be held back by people that don't really give a crap about you. Find people you can celebrate achievements with, find people that will uplift you, that will push you past your limits in a good way, of course, and find people that you feel comfortable with, right? Because that's all that it really is about. If you start mixing with the wrong crowd early on, can be really hard to dig yourself back out. So make the right friends early on. Make sure you feel comfortable. Make sure that they're pushing you. Make sure that they're making you the best version of you that you can potentially be. Don't number two, and this is gonna be a quick one. I think it's a fairly obvious one as well, but a lot of teenagers still just don't really seem to get it. And that's don't break the law. Yeah, please don't break the law. It's not cool, it's not rad, and if your friends insist that you do it, say no, because you're a better person and you don't want to jeopardize whatever future that you may have, right? Don't number three is don't let your health slip up whilst you're in high school. It can be very hard to do this. Trust me, I neglected it for a while, up until maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, but when you're in high school, Academics kind of take over your life, especially if you're in a really intensive system like the IB. Like A-levels? Sure. <laughs> Anyways, if you are in an intensive academic system, it can be hard to manage both sides of your life, the health-related and the academic-related side. But it is imperative that you do so because mental health, physical health will take you a lot farther than whatever scores you're getting in math at the moment. Try to exercise frequently, at least, at least the very minimum of three times a week. It'll do wonders to your physical health. It'll also do wonders to your mental health. It's a way to de-stress like none other. Also, if you're feeling down, have something that you need to talk about. Find someone to talk about it too. Don't let whatever emotions you have fester up inside of you because that is a recipe for disaster. Talk to someone you trust. It can be a friend, family member, counselor, whoever it may be, just talk to them. Don't number four, this is a really important one, especially for your mental health is don't feel like you are a failure that will get nowhere in life if you screw up one test. Over the past year, I've grown to hate tests. I've never loved them. I don't think they're a reflection of what a student can potentially do, but they will come around, they are there. If you fail one or if you don't do as well as you wanted to on one of those tests, you were not a failure. You will not end up being homeless chill out, one test is not the end of the world. I think this starts to become a lot more apparent as you get older. So like, for example, now, when I look back at some of the tests that I didn't do really well in, in the MYP, I'm like, oh wow, that was so irrelevant. And I'm sure right now I'm in the IB, I think every single test that I do right now is important, but a few years down the line, I'm probably gonna look back and go like, wow, why did I stress so much? That being said though, tests aren't going to go away anytime soon. So if you do want some great IB resources, check that link out 
in the top right hand corner. It's got IB websites, question banks, all that. But if you don't want to go watch that video, some of the key points, go to IB documents and go to Exammate. They've got IB questions, IGCSE questions, A-level questions, everything you could potentially need. And number five, the final don't on today's list is don't miss out on opportunities that appear around you because you're scared. The imposter effect. Ah, my favorites. You feel like you aren't good enough or you're scared to do something because of what other people will think, hence you do not do it and you let a fantastic opportunity pass by you. High school is the time where you need to try literally everything. Well, within reason. But high school is the time where you try stuff, where you try getting on a sports team, where you try musical instruments, try, try, try again, fail, fail, get up, fail, get up again, and then you will eventually find your niche, what you like to do. Take it from someone who missed a lot of opportunities because they thought they weren't good enough, they thought people would make fun of them, and then they let a world of opportunities pass by that they would have had a lot of fun with. Screw not being good enough, because last I checked, being good enough is not a criteria for success. And if you're not good enough, and no one is, so go for it. Anyway guys, that is going to be about it for today's video. Wow, it's been a while since I've said that outro, but I hope that you took away some good key information from this video. Follow those tips. Trust me, there are things I wish I would have known when I started high school, way back, like six, five, five, six years ago. Crazy how time flies. Anyway guys, if you did enjoy today's video, I'd appreciate it so much if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, your support has been crazy even when I was gone, which is absolutely mental. I can't thank you guys enough. The channel is growing day by day. We're on that road to 700 subscribers soon. Very, very soon. Anyway guys, thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you had a fantastic weekend and I hope you have an even better week to come. And I will see all of you guys later.